Hi, I'm Dr. Neha, and today we are going to discuss some MCQs on UV spectroscopy. So, uh, let us quickly discuss some of them. Uh, in the coming videos, I would be covering more of these MCQs. So, let us start with first part of this MCQ. Question one says, what is the wavelength range for UV spectrum of light? So, out of these, the answer is 10 nm to 400 nm. Normally, UV is obviously uh, ranging from 10 nm to 400 nm and after that it is of visible light, the range and before that it is of X-rays. Now, select question 2 says, select the wavelength range corresponding to UV visible region. So, UV is around 200 to 400 nm, uh, the region of ultraviolet, may, basically the spectrophotometer work in this range and it goes further from 400 to 800 which is uh, indicating visible region. So, now the question says UV visible both. So, obviously you have to write 200 to 800. 400 to 800 is only of visible. Let us go to the third question very quickly. We would be covering 25 questions in this video. So, see till the end. Tungsten lamp filament has required how much temperature? So, it obviously uh, like requires uh, 3000 uh, K ten temperature. It is very efficient. It is normally used in 350 to 2500 nm range. How much range? wavelength is transmitted by silicate glass so that is the lens which you use in uv spectrophotometer and that transmit around 300 nm to 350 nm that is the correct answer for the wavelength of silicate glass which is used in uh, the lens of the uv spectrophotometer what is the role of slit in uv spectroscopy so the role of slit is to convert polychromatic radiation to monochromatic radiation i guess you have seen my video of uv spectrophotometer if not you may uh, see the link there i have described how does a uv spectrophotometer look like and what are the major uh, you know uh, areas which are required majorly you have slits which are like entry slit and then you have exit slit in between you have prism or a grating uh, device and this slit actually converts that polychromatic radiation into monochromatic so that it falls on the prism and then grating takes place and the exit slit allow only one wavelength to pass which falls on the sample and the sample further absorbs the light and the transmitted light goes to detector and before that you need a light source so here a source of light is there from which you get a light so those lamps are used as a source so i hope you know now <coughs> polychromatic means uh, many direction like this is, is a single direction light which we need now which radiation source as electrode in its construction is the next question uh, tungsten lamp and xenon discharge lamp mercury lamp they don't have electrodes they just use those vapors like mercury vapors are used here and uh, it's not like electrode but hydrogen discharge lamp has electrode in it <coughs> which device is used to isolate the radiation of the desired wavelength from wavelength of the continuous spectrum now monochromator the name itself suggests mono means single chromato so monochromator is that device which is used to isolate the radiation of desired wavelength so the light could be of uh, the seven spectrum but then you have to isolate a single wavelength and that we do using a monochromator coming to diffraction grating this consists of uh, obviously it's coated on uh, the coating for the grating is done on these three so it is all of the above glass quartz and alkyl halide all are used in uh, graters coming to the next question the work of entrance slit is uh, entrance slit allow the light and polychromatic to monochromatic so it is used to get a narrow source you need to narrow down the light Collimator is used for uh, the entire thing which is like slit, grater and then slit. The particular portion is known as collimator. So this is basically used to reform the image of the entrance slit. So whatever entrance slit has allowed the light to enter in the UV spectrophotometer, the role of collimator is to reform that image. 
coming to the exit slit exit slit is used to fall on the sample cell as i've described earlier that once you have entry slit then you have prism then exit slit and then you have sample which goes to detector and here you have light source so obviously this slit is entry this is exit in between you have prism or a diffraction grating thing the entire thing you call it as a collimator now this is your sample so obviously exit slit is used to fall the light on the sample we select only single wavelength to fall on sample that is the role of exit slit now which type of vapor is stored in mercury lamp i guess you can understand with the name itself yes it is mercury vapor okay so very quickly let us go ahead with uh, the next question <coughs> before that if you liked the content please hit on like uh, that will give me motivation and if you are new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe it okay so let us go ahead with the next question beer lambert's law gives the relation between which of the following i guess you remember that uh, lambert beer's law is the law which derives uh, the entire uv spectroscopy and uh, the beer mr beer says that the absorbance is proportional to the concentration of solution while the lambert said that the absorbance is proportional to path length of the solution so beer lambert's law give the relation between which of the thing uh, it's not reflected or scattered light it's actually energy absorption uh, this a is nothing but the absorbance the energy which is absorbed so basically you have a cuvette here uh, the light enters and the light is absorbed and then the light is transmitted so if this is the incident light this is the transmitted light if you want to go in detail i have explained lambert beard law along with its derivation in one of my video you may find the link here and also i have uh, included the numerical portion so you may go there to brush up the knowledge as of now from this uh, derivation i think you can understand that c is the correct answer is between energy absorbance and concentration not about reflected radiation no so basically uh, c is the correct answer let us go ahead with the next question in which of the following ways absorption is related to transmittance now absorbance is obviously logarithm but that is a negative log of t so absorbance is negative log of t so which uh, is like absorbance yeah so the third one says absorption is the negative logarithm of transmittance this derivation also is covered in that particular video so you may go and see how uh, do we arrive at that conclusion as of now it is negative logarithm of transmittance coming to the next question which of the following is not a limitation of beer lambert's law which gives the relation between absorbance thickness and concentration yes that was the lambert's beer's law right absorbance is proportional to concentration and path length where epsilon is molar absorptivity or a constant so looking to the uh, options uh, which is not a limitation is uh, concentration must be lower that is a limitation because if it gets high then there is derivation uh, deviation in the uh, rule radiation source must be monochromatic yes it's a limitation because it if it is polychromatic the entire derivation becomes wrong this is all based on that assumption that the uh, source is monochromatic right so i think uh, we can uh, safely say that radiation must have higher bandwidth Uh, that is a limitation because bandwidth again increases the deviation coming to the beer's law states that the intensity of light decreases with respect to now uh, earlier only i said that the beer says uh, your absorbance is proportional to concentration so obviously it's a concentration greater the concentration and more it will be the uh, absorbance lambert's beer's uh, law states that the intensity of light decreases with respect to according to lambert's law it's related to the path length so you may say that as a distance the distance traveled by uh, that particular cuvette if it is 1 cm or if it is 2 cm so obviously the path length is changed and uh, the molecules present in it will increase if the path length is changed and with that logic absorbance will increase again that that has been explained in my that video so you may go and see let us move quickly to the next question today's aim is just to quickly cover those uh, 25 mcqs representation of beer lambert law is given as a b c if b is distance c is concentration a represents absorbance 
what does a represent so they are talking about this earlier i said epsilon cl so basically they are asking what is epsilon so i guess you know it's molar absorptivity constant so you may call it as absorptivity coming to which of the following is not true about absorption spectroscopy so it involves transmission yes scattering is kept minimum yes it has to absorb right so scattering has to be minimum uh, reflection is kept maximum uh huh and intensity of radiation leaving the substance is an indication of concentration yeah definitely it is an indicator if the concentration increases intensity would decrease so definitely this is the answer this is not true reflection also has to be minimum along with scattering next question says transmittance is given as this where p0 is the power incident uh, on the sample so what is this obviously when this is the q wave and the light falls on the sample uh, if this is the incident light and this is the transmitted light so obviously if uh, some absorbance is there let's say 80% is absorbed so how much is transmitted obviously 20% right so this is what they are asking what does p represents obviously uh, this is incident this is transmitted so if this is incident this is transmitted so radiant power transmitted by the sample is the answer coming to the what is the unit of absorbance which can be derived from beer lambert law absorbance is epsilon cl and uh, this is concentration so gram per liter you may say or mole per liter this is path length you may say centimeter inverse and this is uh, liter inverse mole inverse liter mole inverse centimeter inverse so basically all these get cancelled out and absorbance does not have any unit so no unit is the answer you cannot say how much it is absorbed then what is the unit of molar absorptivity so a by cl that would be molar absorptivity so now since this is does not have any unit while this c and l have unit if you say l l could be centimeter right and uh, concentration could be mole per liter right and then when you reverse it down uh, you will get this liter mole inverse centimeter inverse i hope you got uh, this right right coming to the next question ultraviolet spectrum of benzonitrile shows primary absorption if the solution with a concentration is examined at the wavelength of this absorbance is determined to be this cell length is this what is the molar absorptivity of the band now what they are asking is the single thing like they are asking about epsilon is equal to a by c dot l that is what you have to substitute now if you see in the question uh, let us go yeah so absorbance uh, they say it's 1.30 so you can substitute divide by concentration concentration yeah they say 1 into 10 to the power minus 4 molar so c multiply by l and cell length is 1 cm so multiply by 1 this will give you the answer i hope uh, you can easily calculate it again uh, there is separate question uh, based numerical based video made on my channel you can go and solve interesting problems there coming to the next question uh, uv spectrum of benzonitrile shows band at this if the solution in water with the concentration is examined at the same wavelength uh, just uh, note that in all of the questions the wavelength are same so you can equate these two values uh, to get the next value what will be the absorbance reading and what will be the intensity ratio so absorbance is epsilon cl now in epsilon they said it's 1000 and c they say is, is 1 into 10 to the power minus 4 and obviously path length is by default 1 centimeter now when you solve that you will get that absorbance now they asking intensity ratio so i0 is incident to transmit it right uh, so a absorbance is log of this but they are asking about this so you have to take anti log of this and you will get the answer so i think you can quickly solve this question along with me and then you can find the answer coming to the last question of this video number of double bonds present in carotene is 11 it has 11 conjugated double bonds this i have discussed in another video where i have discussed all of the shifts bathochromic hypsochromic and you know a polarity shifts hyperchromic and all uh, red shift blue shift you can say and what are the effects which change those shifts so that's all for today uh, i'll come up with one more video of mcqs on uv spectroscopy if you want to cover uh, more of the uh, topic you can mention in the comment as of now thank you so much for listening